Yeah. Yep. You look like uh, you're a little bit spruced up. You got a nice dress shirt on. I know. It's not really a dress shirt, but yeah, I thought I'd. Uh, he's got this like new, like, it's almost like he should be downtown hitting up some <laughs> gin bar, Matt. You know, he's got like the nice, nice collared shirt on, mm-hmm. nicer pants, but the untucked shirt mm-hmm. and, the, and the beard stubble, you know, like yeah. he's got the stubble going. He's looking like he's dressed to impress. Sometimes the wife wonders, where am I going? You're not going to record with a guy. She's like, why are you dressed like that? Like, Did she know. actually make a comment? No. She should have. I would have. She probably I am have. making the comment right now. <laughs> yeah. The minute <laughs> like, you get back. I'm, I'm wondering where you're going after this. Yeah, dude. The minute you get back in the house, it'll be like, you smell like a titty bar. <laughs> yeah, and he's got glitter all over himself. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't throw that glitter at me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Gone Gaming. I'm Luca. I'm Ashton. And I'm Matt. And we are your uninformed source for gaming news. So, um, how you guys doing? Good. good. Yeah? Very good. How are you? Doing all right. I'm good, too. Are you, are you Luca? Uh, yes. How you doing? If you keep telling yourself, I <laughs> think it'll come true. So, what have you guys been up to? Uh, Matt, no, you know, I'm going to start because you, you have big news. Yeah, go I, for I'm it. gonna go yeah. first. I've been playing Zelda. Oh yeah, how's that going? After we talked about it last week. Yeah. Are you any further? I am further. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. I thought I had a lot more to go, but mm-hmm. I think if I wanted to beat the game, I could probably do it by the end of the week. So maybe by next podcast, I'll. Uh, You'll be done. I'll be done, and I'll be uh, excited, and I'll be hopefully playing Horizon. Okay. So Is that the only thing you've been playing? Uh, oh no, that's that's not true. Yes, you uh, Splatoon. I tried the test fire. Okay. Yeah. How was it? Uh, when you first play it, no, no, no. <laughs> There's okay. the answer. So no, when you f- yeah, uh, when you first play it, the controls are pretty weird. It's all motion control for aiming up and down, but the right stick moves you left and right, and it's all mm-hmm. complicated. And I played a match and I sucked at it. And then there's a way to change the controller where it's full aiming mm-hmm. with the right thumbstick, but you know the switch controller. The regular one isn't the most precise of them all. Maybe a pro controller would make a difference. If mm-hmm. Nintendo ever manufactured them again, yeah, yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's it's fun, but I mean, I don't see myself putting many hours into it. I, I'm not, I probably won't get it, but I mean, right. who knows? Maybe it gets exciting later or something. Maybe there's I a sweet it. BOGO deal and <laughs> used games. Yeah, with 1-2 Sp- Switch and Splatoon 2. Yeah, exactly. Right. For like 30 bucks. Well, uh, I beat uh, Horizon. Ooh. Not only did I beat it, I platinumed it, so it's Easy. done. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, Matt Ashton's beating it isn't the story; it is getting the platinum trophy. He, mm-hmm. he, this the game isn't complete to Ashton unless he's got a platinum trophy. No, is it to anybody? Yes. To me, yes. Every yeah, me I have not, I don't have one platinum you trophy. Guys suck. Uh, do we? You don't have one? I do not have one, and I probably could get one in like Rocket League or something. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Yeah, I got one in Rocket League by not actually trying to get it. That's no, how but you, I think you did it purposely to piss me off. Because yeah, I said try. how easy it was, and oh, you were yes. close. Yeah, and you got it ahead of Ashton. <laughs> you got that. Yeah, just to bother Ashton. <laughs> yeah. So, but I did, I, I did Platinum it. Fun, awesome game. When yeah. you actually get through the story, like, I, I got to say, even like I mentioned last time, the side quests, they take away a bit from the game. And uh-huh. I think a lot of open world side quests do. Yeah. I felt the same with Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I, you know, even. I, any any open world just it's kind of there to give you experience to kind of explore a bit mm-hmm. it, but it wasn't really much so getting past that and sticking to the main story it's a phenomenal story yeah, i yeah. loved every minute of it it's especially a, when you start to figure out again the who the what the why and like why yeah, you're yeah, there yeah. it's incredible so you guys the are graphics are, are pretty as hell like. absolutely uh so platinum it was awesome so that would be my 10th so far so I do you have that on your digits. tinder account no, I, got 10 I should up, I should update that. You should, yeah, because that's that's a great conversation opener. Don't have to break in saying 10, 10 platinum PlayStation trophies. Just say I got ten platinum trophies. They'll <laughs> wonder why, and you can lie. <laughs> Just that's like fair. the rest of your profile. Yeah, it's a truth so, to any successful six marriage. Eight, <laughs> two hundred and thirty pounds ripped. <laughs> yeah, bodybuilder. What about you? Uh, I beat. Zelda. Whoa. Now, I did not 100 complete beat it. I did Loser. not get all the Korko seeds, and I did not get all the shrines. Kor- the Korok seeds, though, there's Korok like a thousand of them, isn't there? 900? Yeah, there's a ridiculous You're not going to do that. So I'm not going to get all the seeds. Um, I have 89 or 87 shrines mm-hmm. out of 120. 
Okay. So I'm going back and I'm finishing up side quests and the shrines, but I... How was it overall? Incredible. Now that you've done it, do you think it's better than the 64? Ocarina? Ocarina? Uh, okay, so it plays better. Like, I'm mm-hmm. actually... Funny that you mentioned story wise, that. Story-wise. Story-wise. Yeah, so funny that you mentioned that. I'm actually re-beating Ocarina Matt as came, we speak. Matt came by yesterday to pick up my GameCube because he has yeah. that Master Edition, whatever. Yeah, the Master Sword Collection Yeah, for the GameCube. It was basically they had Ocarina of Time, Majora's, Majora's Mask, Mask, and uh, like the a Nintendo hard games. version. Of oh, yeah, yeah I remember that. Versions. And they had like the hard version of Ocarina or Majora's? Or I can't remember that. I remember that. So, yeah, yeah. I'm re-beating it. Um, I'll say gameplay-wise, the new game is obviously far better. It looks better. Mm-hmm. There's way more to the game that allows you to do. Uh, story-wise, bo- uh, I'd give it to Ocarina of Time still. Really? Yes. But overall, excitement and enjoyment, it's right up there with Ocarina of Time. Nice. Like, I've had a blast playing that game. Okay. I'm Honestly, right now, it's all pointing towards possibly being even better. The only exception to all of Zelda, I still think the best ending was the Wind Waker, mm-hmm. when at the end you just stick the sword right into Ganon's head. Yeah, his dome piece. Uh, yeah, it's pretty badass, actually. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. for um, a Zelda game. Like, it's pretty violent yeah, for Zelda. Yeah. I should say for Link. I, I will say one thing that makes Ocarina so good was the music. Like going well, back for the time, read, especially yeah. like that's if you look at it for its time, it's the best one. No question. And That's the thing. Like I'm playing it again and I'm still having as much fun with that game again, like being in Hyrule Field and having the music playing and going to Kakariko Village with the music playing. It's it's awesome. Like you're right back into it. You're immersed mm-hmm. again. And you're like, it's fantastic. Hmm. Whereas this new one, it just felt like a big evolution of that game. Yeah. So nice. the so basically the the meta scores are fair for both games. Oh, you think? 100%, oh yeah, 100%. they deserve them. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Um, I did bring a little treat for you guys. So the wife went to Vegas uh-huh. and uh, she she brought back. Yeah, some, I kind of got a little peek. I don't know exactly what it is. So I, I want to open these suckers up and uh, horny gummy men and enjoy those. I'm gonna eat that. I like I love gummies. Go ahead and open them up. I don't know. Can I? I'm gonna go on record and say this, and I know he's probably gonna pick up Horizon right away and start playing it again. Man, I'm trying to eat these men's penises, right? <laughs> That's fine. You you do that till your heart's content, bud. Um, oh, they're hard. Are they? <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Not very tasty. Great no? pun. No. Oh. You gotta think they're a little nutty. He's pretty. He's pretty. In, you know, well endowed for a gummy. So anyways, I was going to say, I don't know if I'm going to get back into Horizon anytime soon. No? No, it's after playing an open world game. Oh, that's as guy guy's fast. sporting a huge rocket right there. <laughs> yeah, a red <laughs> rocket. A red <laughs> rocket. Of course you take the red one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get back into Horizon for a bit. Really? Yeah, it's well, such you're, a... You're still going to finish up Zelda. That, and it's such a grind playing those big open world games that you. I feel like you need to break from them. Hmm. You're missing out. I'm yeah. going to record Ashton recording you... Already happened. Mm. Ashton, are you gonna have one? Not at all. I'm gonna record you. <laughs> Not at all. Really? Yeah, I'll have one. So, um, and some of those dick candies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are these are ridiculous, and it's making a lot of noise. That's all right. Um, anyway, so I want to go into. Um, oh, geez, what happened to this guy? What do you mean? He's, I don't know. His, his red Frank rocket account? over there. This one's a guy pretty. Yeah. Good. I'm good. Not everyone, you know. Has oh, he has a micro? <laughs> Destiny 2, some news. Destiny 2? Uh, Destiny 2 was, I guess, released. Or not released, the... Um, Revealed. The reveal for the date. So, Mass Effect wow. Andromeda came out. Mm-hmm. Um, was not met with great scores, such as Horizon or Zelda. Uh, I think uh, mm-hmm. Metacritic is sitting around 74. User score... I think it was on the same thing. It was like a 4.3. I'm not sure if that's out of 10, but uh, not not doing so well. Mainly because I think of the um, animation glitches. There's some problems with the game. Uh, and I think we've seen this a few times, actually. Assassin's Creed being the most other recent. Assassin's Creed Unity had yeah. some mm-hmm. terrible. Unity where, was yeah. known for being the glitchiest AAA game. Yeah, so there's... And, and that kind of, kind of brings me to these AAA games being released in a sense unfinished mm-hmm. and it's i don't want to say it's becoming a trend because it's not happening as often but there's a lot of games where 
there's these crazy day one patches or even after a few even after a few patches it doesn't fix these these uh problems for some people it's game breaking we're talking about this i think once it first came out mass effects reviews weren't too great and i was saying i understand when there's these glitches for games that are yearly you know they're just there you know the yearly assassin's creed which they used they used to do now they they've kind of pushed i think at least a couple year cycle or the call of duties but then again they have the studios have three years for the call of duties right mm-hmm but when it's a game like Mass Effect, with the pedigree it has, the first one, I'll admit, I wasn't the hugest fan of. I like the story, but there's a lot of tedious parts to it. Yeah. Two improved on it, and three even improved on that. Right. And the stories were amazing. This was this was a top-notch game. Like, it was a top-notch series. So knowing that they had all this time to work on it, and they yeah, just pushed the that out, that I don't know. I don't know how they, how they let that slip out. I, I would rather, personally, them wait six more months with a proper game because it looks really cool. When Mm -hmm. I just look at it, the animations not in dialogue look pretty like a lot better than before, which seemed very rigid previously. Mm -hmm. So they've improved on the motion cap, not, not not on the anime, not on the dialogue. Right now. How long did the mass effect three come out? I can't even remember that. What system was that for? 360. It was 360. PS3. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people were saying that this was worse than mass effect three. Yeah, and also PC, but I mean, yeah, it wasn't. So these consoles have consoles have been out for three over three years now. Yeah. So they've that's had some good. time. No, it's not good. Like for you guys, if you play a game like that, would that be game breaking for you? Like again, it is just animation, right? So it's just a bit of the story. You're watching a cutscene or a video, and then it just completely screws up. How is that game breaking for you? Is that like you know what? This is too ridiculous. I can't. I can't do this. Just, does it take away from the story? Does it take away from playing the game, the experience? It can, absolutely, right? It can break your experience and your enjoyment of the mm-hmm. game. The story can be great, but if the gameplay isn't tight and mm-hmm. But this is fluid, more affecting the story than, than gameplay. Yeah, because this is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's more of like the cutscenes and the videos, right? But it does take you out of it, right? Cause yeah, it, that, you're not as immersed. You're not, every game, you're working towards those points. And there's not many games that we would say has like amazing voice acting. Like, it's usually, you're not expecting, uh, you know, some Emmy Award winning performance or some some oscar worthy performances but at least you can still get into it so you throw in the comical animation mm-hmm. it just looks it's gone bad, yeah. yeah it's and mass effect is a story driven game to me yeah of course if the gameplay is good then you might be able to get away with it but it, <clears throat> it'll definitely take you away from the experience mm-hmm. you won't feel connected to the characters as much because Again, every time you're playing a story game, you're essentially working your way towards the next cutscene. Yeah. And when those cutscenes fall short and fail, everything you kind of work towards to get there feels pointless. It right. doesn't have as much weight to it. Well, mm. I'm uh, personally, I'm hoping they fix it with uh, their patches in the future. And right. I guess the one benefit to a Mass Effect fan that having a glitch like this happen, if that is the main reason why it's getting low scores at least a patch could fix that and the game will probably go on discount sooner rather than later mm-hmm. to pick up some people to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if it would get fixed or patched. Um, on Reddit, there was one of the developers that worked on the Mass Effect Mass Effect game. 1, the son Naughty Dog, right? The same guy? Mm-hmm. The guy who's now working for a Naughty Dog? So. Uh, I'm not sure who the developer was. I just remembered seeing it on Reddit. He, they were doing an AMA and they're when the game came out and he was commenting on it and he was just saying that development for that game was in shambles and the studio was overworking mm-hmm. their employees. Really? Yeah, and it was just it got really messy, I guess. And clearly that's what happened, I guess. It was just the result of bad development. I've always I've always wondered and, and you know, I don't develop games. I know there's a lot of time and a lot of people that go uh, you know, that work on these things and uh, they put on a lot of hard work, but you think for the amount of people working on games, the amount of testing that's going on, and maybe there's not as much as I think there is, that they would catch stuff like this. Um, like, I, I usually often wonder what goes into the alpha and the beta tests when you have people testing the game that purposely play it nonstop to look for game-breaking uh, issues. Well, and it's like, you know, I, I've heard stories of people testing games where their job is to, like, Obviously, they're, they got to test everything in the game, so they're like running into walls mm-hmm. purposely. They're going areas where you shouldn't to see if the game glitches. These games are pretty big like, now, though. So I mean, like to do what they used to do 
in like let's say an ocarina of time world which you know it's big but not too big yeah and a mass effect is i'm assuming significantly larger i wonder if something when they're testing games though is if they they purposely skip the cutscenes because they're just trying the gameplay maybe but my one thought is they found the issue and this nearing release date and then they saw they basically convinced themselves that it wasn't as big of an issue as it is. Right. I think that it was something that was going to take a significant amount of time to rework. Like I'm talking, who knows, a year or two years, and EA doesn't want that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if mm-hmm. The game's good enough. There's going to be a little problem with the animation. Send it out. Work on the next one. I guess they. I guess they bank on the people waiting for this game. The hype of you know Mass Effect and drama. I, I have a friend who picked up where they're just going to buy it regardless. Because right? it's Mass so, Effect. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mass Effect is a series that just deserves your money first time down. Mm-hmm. Now this game might change their perspective in the future. I don't know it's pretty unacceptable when you think about it. You can damage yeah. your brand not releasing just, something is, too is early that, if it's yeah, not ready. But yeah. not just that. It how long was it in development for? Three, four years? At least. At least. At least. Five years. Like look at for instance, and I hate to draw back to this game or even Horizon, but look at what they did. The last game Gorilla Games released was the Kill Switch Shadowfall. Mm-hmm. Killzone. Killzone, sorry. And that game it was a launch. Title. It was a launch title, mixed reviews, whatnot. It was for a launch title. It was definitely <clears throat> decent. Fast forward now, three years later, and they drop a whole new IP, and it's met with raved reviews. Mm-hmm. Look at Zelda with their last big release. It was Skyward Sword, and then the Wii U came out. They teased something at E3 when they revealed Zelda at the E3 in 2012. If I get my dates correct, um, don't quote me on it. And then five years later from that or whatever, you drop Breath of the Wild, which is insane. So for Mass Effect to come out after an X amount of time not being well, in the spotlight. I'm looking at, at the the production notes, or I guess on Wikipedia, and it said early stages of the development for Mass Effect started in 2012. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, that's four that, or five if years. You, if, you're, if it's taking you that long to put together a game and it still has issues, mm-hmm. that's unacceptable and they should reprimand people that bought the game well like reimburse them yeah or something that's i think not, that's not cool people work man games cost almost a hundred dollars a pop now especially here in canada with mm-hmm. tax and all that yeah. a decent like a high school kid or anyone that's working at a minimum wage job or has a house and bills to pay they're going out they're looking forward to this game they're dropping about a hundred dollars and you're basically shortchanging them mm-hmm. because you guys didn't do your job properly. That's not fair to those people. How do you expect anyone to consider going back to you? Right. That being said, it's like the value of like you get people like you get thousands upon thousands of hours of work for your hundred bucks. Like when you look at it that way, it's not bad. But yes, when there's so much competition around, they you, de- you, definitely, else. you definitely feel a short change. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I remember actually um, Batman, the telltale series also had major problems and mm-hmm. that, that, I picked up that game way late, so after it's been out, and after all, I think six episodes were released, um, and you think by then it would have been fixed. I, I still had issues. They move on to the next game, just like yeah. The, at that point, when they're done, just like all right, let's keep keep it going. The Rock City Batman's was it Batman Arkham City? Mm-hmm. That game, I, I got near the end of the game, put m- plenty of hours into it, twenty plus thirty hours, maybe even more, and then there's a glitch at the end where i saved it i was I was at that point there's like a countdown and it's like it's nearing the end and i turned off my console i don't know if it was maybe it was mid save and that's what corrupted i don't know it, it wasn't corrupted it just when i went into the game the save file was missing like sorry the save file was there on my xbox hard drive but when i went to the game it's all my three slots were new game new game new game and hmm. then i i see a lot of people online were having that problem and then you know, they addressed it and all that stuff. We're working on it. Nothing, Nothing came, of, came it. of it. Right. And I didn't beat that game. And I, and then I got fooled again buying a Arkham, Knight. Arkham Knight on PC. <laughs> so shame on me twice. Well, I will. I can. Can I tell you the end of uh, Arkham City? Why not? Yeah, but Batman wins. So there you go. Yep. There. Damn it. I didn't want to know. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, and I could, you know, it's been so long for us, and I hate to say it because I don't want to make a sound, you know, that cliche, oh, we're, we're so old now, uh, or so long ago. But do you remember, like, NES games or SNES games being broken like that? Like, there were certain no. things where I know, like, at least Japanese releases, there's certain glitches, certain things you can do that you can kind of 
either you know break the code and you can do some weird things with it (laughs) but do you ever remember games being broken like that now obviously there weren't cinematics they weren't as heavy as they are now in terms of animation and the amount of what you know Mm -hmm. power that is in it but you know for me back in the day if and and this is why i really love games back then is that's all you had if you screwed up on that game people weren't going to go buy your number two if you're if your first game sucked or your second game sucked they're not buying your sequel but then again, you also can look at it as they're aiming a little bigger now because they can fix something. Yeah. I, I will say this. The reason I loved games back then was because they licensed everything. So that was pretty cool. They licensed Yeah, the same game, just like, the different yeah, character, different sprites. <laughs> Fred Hall's hockey, Mario Lemieux's playoff run. It was ridiculous. That Star Wars, Super Star Wars. To go on to your point, I wouldn't say that the glitches were game-breaking back then, but there was a lot of loopholes in games where right. they couldn't reach you at a certain area and you had a, an attack that was able to reach that guy. Mm. So it would be like... Yeah, but that happens now. Not to the that extent. Not to the extent back no, then. We, like if, there, could, if it's there, me and Ash will fight. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Or <laughs> if one, I can exploit it to get a trophy, you, damn right I did. Were you there, or was it Matt that was there when I was playing Zelda? And I was yeah, just throwing. It yeah, it's Matt. And there's this like big character you fight. There's a bunch of them around. They're called like Hinox, Helix, or something. Like Hinox, that. Hinox, and I, I climbed up high where he can't reach me, and I just kept throwing bombs at him. And then he would like sometimes throw stuff, but I had like a good angle. Mm -hmm. So I could have probably beat him a lot quicker if I tried with my sword, but I could have also died. Mm -hmm. So I spent about 20 minutes up there. It takes you longer, but you know, you did it the right way. Yeah, I didn't get one. He didn't hit me once. But back to what I was getting at with older games, like if you go back and you play, for instance, Marvel Super Hero War of the Gems, there's certain areas where a guy would have an attack and it'd be coming at you, but because you're in a certain position on the screen, it looks like it's gonna it's gonna hit you, but it just doesn't because you can affect the pixels or something with it. Right. So they had game breaking things, or not game breaking, but little glitches, glitches that you exploited. It just didn't ruin the outcome of the game. Yeah. Or if you didn't move into that certain spot, then you'd never notice it. Yeah. Like NHL ninety four had the cut across the crease, you always score. <laughs> <laughs> the wraparound was 93, right? Yeah. That's it was a go-to move. Yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully, um, hopefully with the new bigger releases coming out, you know, Red Dead, um, they're taking a lot of time with it. I still think it's going to be delayed. But Red Dead it has oh, a yeah. release date, apparently. Yeah, An actual date? or a, a, It'll be delayed. Fall. September 24th. I September. Think It'll be delayed. Ashton didn't, didn't was, believe it was going to be fall. I'm saying it now. It's going to be delayed. There was Ashton. a leaked image on Reddit that broke out, and it was Red Dead with a release date of September 24th. Rockstar. Don't quote me on it, but you can check it. All right. I, well, I don't know what am I going to get that for. Again, my for my PS4 Pro because I did pre-order it and it's fully paid. And It'll be a waste if you don't. It'll be your best looking system that you have. Well, if one Scorpio comes out, mm. that's the question. But that'll probably be out before Scorpio. That's the tough question, right? Well, I ta- just wants to borrow mine. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about um, leaked games, we're going to jump into the news now. Some gaming news coming mm-hmm. around the internet in the past week or so. We are looking at uh, Destiny Two. It looks like could possibly have a release date destiny 2 yeah so there was a um, sequel there was a poster released i believe in europe um from some gaming store that showed a release date of september 8th now i believe that was possibly i think a friday okay and so i like this i like these friday releases but usually for us it's a tuesday release and in europe i believe their releases are friday so in north america yeah um so i think for north america it may, might come out sooner, but who knows? We're not sure yet. I mean, Zelda was released with a Switch on a Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo does Friday. Most of their big stuff is Friday. But I, yeah, a lot of the stuff that in North America is Tuesday. I know then, the standard is Tuesday, th- but they've been pushing a little more weekend stuff yeah, recently. I think yeah. they're starting to switch and starting to go bigger things on Friday. Because people probably get paid on Thursday night or Fridays. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So Destiny 2, do you guys, did you think that was coming out this year? Yeah. Honestly, I stopped. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me at all because they did release, they did have like a yearly schedule for them initially, right? Mm-hmm. They had the original game, some the Taken King, and there's another one. Some yeah, so basically Destiny came out and it launched the game and it was a giant test pilot. And there was a lot of not the game one that breaking we bought. issues. But the there one was, that we bought. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. there was issues with leveling up and some stuff. So then they released the Taken King, which was... The new game, which is essentially Destiny 1 with all the DLC, and it fixed all the previous issues. And then they added a couple expansion packs and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. the game had its support continued 
mm. well beyond its release, which was awesome. Um, talking to people that had played the first one and then taking King, what a difference. Like, really? Yeah, they said... Because the first one turned us off. Yeah. Whatever, I know you know I haven't played it since. Whatever they got wrong with the first one, they fixed with the second Taking King, and Taking King was a whole new game, essentially. Mm-hmm. All with right. That being one. Would you guys, are you guys getting Destiny 2? Probably not. No. Probably not, no. All right. Especially if you, if Red Dead's coming out yeah, September. Same no, time. no chance. Uh, and Mario 2. Luca, you mentioned this earlier, Splatoon 2. Uh, yes, had yes. their global test fire beta, as they called it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it was this past Friday, March twenty fourth. It was yeah. They'd... Till today, the twenty sixth. Yeah. Right? So, so the way it works is it's not your standard beta where they'll yeah, give you weird. a weekend to to play it, or you know, a couple days to a week or whatever it is. They open up hours that it's available. So on Friday they had, let's say, three p.m. till four p.m. and then like eleven p.m. till midnight. And then Saturday, they had three hour long blocks. And then Sunday being today, they had two. I played I played one block, maybe 40 minutes of it. That's messed up. I mean... Like, why would they do that? If why would I just leave it open all, open all weekend? I guess they want to stress their servers. I don't know if that's what it is. So that would be a good stress test. To but just what, have but, people all coming in at that time. But then think yeah. about the people that's missing it. Yeah, then how, how, how are you stressing it if people are missing it? That's not a true test what your servers can do. Well, then what you do is after that, then you throw in maybe, here's two days, play it, go nuts. Right. Yeah, well, Splatoon 2, and we'll see how that comes out. I think we I all mean, know how I think it's going to be. It's not the best shooter, but I mean, we'll see. I, 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 I watched ho- some gameplay of it. it. To me, it still looks terrible. I'm sure there's people that like it, and good for it's, you if you do. It's pretty fun. Like, it, it's not that it's not fun. It's just... If I'm going to play shooter, I want to play something a little better. And and the Switch controller mm. isn't the best for it. I want to try the Pro controller whenever Nintendo does. Manufacture ma- more? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just um, like the NES Classic controllers because I haven't been able to find one? Yeah. Yeah. Poor you. You got an NES Classic. No. Did anyone notice there was a photo on our gaming today? And it was like from the Nintendo Switch factory. And it said, we're working hard at manufacturing Switches. And it's just Luigi and Mario in cosplay, like putting it in. And someone's comment on the photo was, "Well, that explains why there's none. There's only two people." <laughs> or how about they, you know, employ people in the factory rather than a marketing picture? You know, people <laughs> working the marketing, trying to make it seem like everything's good. Yeah. So Splatoon two, everybody. If you didn't play it, too bad. Uh, Titanfall two has new DLC coming out at the end of the month. Ooh. Multiplayer update, a new map. I think it's called Colony. Okay. Uh, new weapon, new execution, and new cosmetics to purchase. Yeah. Premium gaming. What do you mean? Uh, but I mean, at least it's not pay to win, right? That's our. That was our big concern with Call of Duty. I think we yeah. all agreed that the fact that you lock weapons behind uh, spending COD points and or buying COD yeah, points. Yeah, basically and spending. And it's now it's, it's even a gamble in Call of Duty. At least Titanfall's given you everything. The only thing they're you have to pay for is camouflage like yeah, yeah. that's that, that, that's, all co- that that's all cosmetic I'm, I'm i'm like i agree i'm okay with that a if, free if you oh, yeah, so, the, yeah, some the of the DLC's older call of duties free. did Sorry, that. yeah yeah the dlc's yeah, free yeah, yeah. I so some of the other wonderful. older call of duties did that where if you want to like the special gun camo it was a dollar 99 hey i'm all for it or you Go wanted that it. cowboy hat you know okay you want to get that spend the Go money that's cool because it does nothing special doesn't enhance your game in any way um, but, uh, yeah, Titanfall 2 seems to be, you know, doing decent with that. I, I kind of respect the, they're, uh, the free DLC. They're so. doing it the right way. And, but unfortunately they're not getting, uh, I guess getting their karma back for doing it the right way. Cause I'm sure no. Call of Duty's still beating them and Battlefield is still beating them. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully more and more people start looking at that as a viable option for their, their shooter. Yeah. No, that's true. But I, I don't know if they're going to have another shot at this, but we'll see. They're going to make another Titanfall. You really think so? Oh yeah. All right. We'll see. Um, April's Game of Golds for Xbox. So we got uh, Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, Launch title. Walking Dead Season 2. Telltale game. I hear they're good. Um, and for the 360, so those are for Xbox One. Okay. Right? And 360, it's Darksiders and Assassin's Creed Revelations. So yeah, if you don't know, every game I believe that's released on Xbox 360 is playable on your Xbox, on Xbox One, One. With, I guess, for backwards compatibility. Okay. So Matt's a big fan of the backwards compatibility. Yeah, man. All right. Well, there you go. You can play uh, some good old Darksiders. I'll, I will say, though, uh, uh, Rise, Son of Rome, it was not one of the better games. It's one of those games I beat because it was a launch title game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it looked cool. Graphically, it looked really good for the time. Uh, it still probably holds up decently. But it just 
I played the game and I'm like, I don't care about this character one bit. Really? I, I yeah. Will, I will say that I think Pretty the Xbox shallow. One has come a long way since when it first launched. I I think it has a lot to do with Phil Spencer. Yeah. The man knows games and he like before he was there, you saw a lot of like pettiness between, you know, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, like it was a lot of bickering. And then I remember, I don't know, he might've not been the first guy. He probably wasn't, but I, he was the first guy I remember doing the congratulations to Sony for like releasing mm-hmm. Naughty Dog, uh, for Naughty Dog's release of Uncharted 3 or whatever it was when he came in or to four. Like I noticed that kind of started. He was more appreciative. Like he seemed like a guy who likes the gaming industry. He, he respects Nintendo. He respects Sony. Mm-hmm. And then it started coming all around sony's giving props to nintendo for releasing you know the switch with uh with zelda same with microsoft it's getting less hostile with the actual manufacturers but the fanboys no i would like us to do an episode where we revisit the consoles since launch and kind of compare the one on the ps4 the one in the ps4 yeah Yeah. that's something we can hold in the back burner Yeah. yeah um and then uh for playstation ps plus right yeah, now because i don't know what they are i remember you saying i i still think this is a good chance because i've read a lot about it but okay. it's not i guess you know not confirmed confirmed didn't. but okay. uh, we're getting uh drawn to death have you guys heard of that one yeah i it saw sounds it familiar. Their sony so thing. david jaffe this is his game who uh he worked on twisted metal and god of war those okay. franchises okay um Solid so franchises this game, the kind of history that I know behind it was they Sony wanted to try out the free to play, the freemium games with this game, mm-hmm. and apparently they got a lot of backlash from PlayStation fans and Sony fans, and nobody wants these games. Nobody wants the game out for free and they have to pay for all the content or play as we were yeah, talking about, yeah. right, to experience the games. So that was their initial run to say, are games going this way in the future? Because obviously mobile they are, right? Yeah. Um, so is there room for these types of games on platform on uh, on, on the uh, consoles? So this is was supposed to be a free to play, and that blew up in their face. So, so, so no, I'm just saying it's funny because this whole free to play thing it's it is the modern day arcade, if you will. Mm-hmm. Really, you pump your quarter in, you can play for a certain amount of time, and then you're gonna have to put in another quarter of you if you want to play yeah, more. That's true. That's basically what as some. I don't know if it was like a it was like on Reddit I saw or someone was like saying I'm a developer and and we basically make these games to make profits. It's kind of like today's arcade and I'm like right. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. The arcades are gone as far as I know at least Most in our them, area. Yeah, at least where we live. The only things coming out might be extremely higher end versions of them which would be cool if they do come. Out. I heard in like Toronto they're making some crazy gaming like they got like they had they had him on the news. This guy looks like he's an engineer, and they're like got a massive space, and they're gonna put like all sorts of games, old school arcades, possibly even like VR and all that stuff. So is, is that place gonna be filled with hipsters? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Matt, don't... we'll see you there. Says the guy wearing a button up shirt and tight jeans. With Just a, I dress with a, well. With a stubble. Yeah. Just because I dress well. Yeah. Go listen to your. Yeah, that's what they also. I, I don't wear those toques. You don't need to wear or, a tube to be a hipster. That's not the criteria. Or yeah. glassless, or, you know, glassless, glassless. Sorry to all hipsters listening. <laughs> we mean no offense. So, they going back to this game, drawn they're to supposed death, to yeah. do, uh, drawn to death, they're supposed to do um, free-to-play. That didn't work, so they said, okay, they're going to charge for it, but I think they still want to try and, I, I don't know, somehow stick with that um, concept. So, I think now what they've done, obviously, I don't say obviously, but what it seems they've done is teamed up with Sony to make it, a free game for PS Plus. Mm. So now that everyone's getting the game for free, now biggest question is what happens with the content? Do you have to pay to unlock characters? Do you have to pay to unlock levels? Do you have to pay to unlock weapons? Which will still keep it technically mm-hmm. under the free-to-play platform, but it's technically not because you got it for free on PS Plus. Now, for the people that don't, you're probably going to have to pay for it later on. So uh, we'll see what happens with this. Yeah, interesting. But I uh, what else is coming out because I'm sure it'll come out shortly. Yeah, and usually there's two games at least for the PS4. Usually, once one announced, the Xbox announced, PlayStation will come right back with theirs, or vice versa, right? Yeah, so, and it's never so normally that nothing great. Nothing out yet on that, huh? No, no, still uh, just drawn to death, and that's still ifs. Okay, okay. Uh, but that's it for the news for the week. That's it for the news. All now, right. kind of going past that, one thing that, um, which something else actually came up that what we were going to put in the news section, but you know what we decided might make a decent topic to discuss right now was. Um, Xbox 
has announced they're releasing a new controller. It's called the Tech Series, mm-hmm. um, which is a little strange because I think they're trying to hype it up for the Scorpio, but it's coming out a little like way before the Scorpio's well, release. The thing is, we don't know when the Scorpio is going to be released. It's supposed right. to be fall, but but who- these I think are supposed to be in a sense designed or marketed for the Scorpio. If I'm if I read the article correct, yeah. Well, when the Xbox One S came out, it had a. I don't know if, it's, if they use Bluetooth technology to communicate with uh, with the new Xbox One S. I think okay. the old one used a different, I don't know, different frequency or whatever. It's supposed to be better. The the Xbox One S controller is supposed to be better. Mm-hmm. Before it came out, and I think it happened with the PS4 Pro. They had the the new controllers. The, word, the, yep. the PS4 Pro, now when it's wired, is in wired mode. It's not being charged and you're still playing wirelessly. That's so, right. So they do release it usually just before the launch. So when is this tech series supposed <clears> to... That's up. a good question. I, I didn't. I didn't I see think a it, date. I think it was Aprilish. It, it's it's soon, and we know Scorpio's not going to at least till fall. Well, I mean, wouldn't that be crazy though if they are doing what they've what consoles have done before, and they have a surprise, and it's going to be out? E3? That would be amazing. Probably won't, but I mean, no. that'd be crazy. <clears throat> so, looking at new controllers again. So, ideally, it's supposed to be slated for Scorpio. We'll see what happens with that, because um, then I'm assuming the Scorpio controller is not going to be really any different from the xbox one no it's not supposed to be with this tech controller the tech series i think the main difference is they're adding a little more rubber grip to the back <coughs> um i think uh there's some slight changes to the buttons and it, i think in just maybe how they feel maybe um but then it's more of a skin um so again the tech technical series i think yeah, it's just yeah, more yeah. Of, of a skin so well, so i noticed when i was i was reading up on it 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 reminds me i don't know if anyone's used you guys have used my xbox one controller the white one right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so there's a white xbox one controller i think it's called lunar white and on the back there's like a rubber grip and it's it feels nice it feels really great. nice and i believe that's coming to this series as yeah. well so i mean it's just going to standardize the newer controller with more premium feel mm-hmm. so so thinking about this and thinking about okay so ideally this might be what the new scorpio controller is going to be like um I started thinking about what was my favorite controllers to use. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to kind of open up to you guys and say, you know, maybe what was your, you know, top three, if you can think of that, uh, fra- favorite controllers, and maybe what was your worst controller? Yeah, that, it's and we're going back to all the games we played. So think of all the systems you played. Yeah, I've been playing since Atari, so I got a, I got well, a, you, you got, you got a few to go through. Which my parents threw out, and I'm kind of upset about. They didn't. They don't like you. It wasn't my console, to be fair, but I mean, I would have been a nice thing to inherit or get from. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I kept my Nintendos, my brothers and mine, but I just took that chance and no, no, I'm, I'm keeping this. this Damn right. Mine. Damn right. <laughs> now he's going to come, if he listens to this, he's going to come after you for that Nintendo. Oh, he, he already does. He already tries. <laughs> it ain't happening. So Matt, throwing it over to you. Top, your, What's your top three favorite? What's your worst right. worst controller? I'm going to go my worst controllers oh, you're first. Gonna, you're going to start off yeah, with that. Yeah, I'm going to start off with the bad and mm-hmm. then work my way to the good. Um... My worst, the worst controller was the first Xbox controller, that big, hunky, oversized, blocky. What a joke. That is, that's right there, but there's some little bit of charm to that one. I'll tell you why for me. There's a guy from, like, I don't know when Xbox came out. I think I was in the ninth grade, or I think I was in the ninth grade. And one of the, I guess, one of my first high school friends I met, he's like, I got, I got the Xbox. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, like, I was into PlayStation 2 probably at that time. Uh, but he had the Xbox he, when it came out. And he's like, you want to come by? I got this game called Halo. And I was supposed to probably just swing by for a couple hours and then go home. And I was there all night. Mm-hmm. And even though the controller was weird and uncomfortable, something about that white and black button that I can change my grenade type or whatever. And it, it was cool. It, when you look back at it, it was a terrible controller. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was the size of like a watermelon. It was ridiculous. But when I was playing Halo, I didn't even notice it. You know, it was oh, I did. I couldn't reach any of the buttons. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was stupid. I liked the controller, but I thought it was ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely one of the ugliest. That that little circular Xbox. I was gonna oof. say the Dreamcast controller. Wow. I like the controller. I like it. I like the controller, but. I thought it was really dumb when you didn't have that screen, memory card screen. <laughs> and just, just a, a hole in it? Hole <laughs> in it. And that makes it a bad controller? It wasn't the most comfortable. Design-wise, that's pretty stupid. Wow. I'm on the opposite end. That's in my top three. Really? I, yeah. I enjoyed it. It wasn't the worst controller. And then I was going to say the first Nintendo controller. 
This is weird. You and Ashton because are lined up because we talked about this while before. you were while you were out and we were talking about this. I said probably my worst is the Xbox One because it was way too big and for for me small game. hands it doesn't work well. And especially at that age, I was even smaller, so it was too big for me. That's possible. Um, <laughs> about me being smaller than now, uh, you're a jerk. And uh, the Dreamcast, because of that reason too, it's, it was big. It was awkward. It didn't fit right in my hands. It was very wide, uh, and I, I forgot about that memory card so it literally is just a gaping hole in the middle of your controller uh and I'll then give you one beef but it wasn't enough for me is the cable being underneath that was my yes, one and beef. that too that was the only beef and then uh the nintendo one going back and thinking about obviously for the day that's all you had right so it's like all right this is cool you're playing nintendo but when you pick it up now it's like the squareness of it yeah. it's very it digs into your hands yes. like how did we play this and enjoy the system like it this hurts it wasn't very comfortable i wasn't no. crazy about that um i will say though the first xbox controller when they did come out with the smaller version of it because they did end up coming out during the yeah cycle, yeah yeah, yeah. Sh- was that the was, yes was that the slim xbox s controller okay yeah it was, it was like just same the, controller but smaller yeah it was the same right. controller it was just condensed it wasn't as big and, and wide I don't, I don't think they had the black and white button did. there did it yeah i think it had i believe it had the black and white button because i don't think the original controller had shoulder buttons i think they didn't, didn't that they came put... in the 360 okay okay um the Xbox Slim, the smaller you know what, No, no, no. You know what it was? It was put down to the bottom of it, yes. not up to the top. Right, it was down to the bottom, I believe. So the smaller Xbox controller mm-hmm. was much, much better. Um, right, but that that was still bigger than the ones now, right? I don't think they're the same not size. Much bigger, if any. Like it, I thought they still shrunk no, they it. shrunk it. They shrunk yeah. it a yeah. good amount, and they changed the shaping of it. Mm-hmm. So for my favorite controllers, no particular order. Well, you um, were going worst to best, so why don't you go from? You don't, you don't have a one specific favorite controller? Okay, so I have one specific favorite controller. Then go um, leave that one. Cool. All right. Where are the two? I was going to say GameCube. I really enjoyed the GameCube that's, controller. That's one of your top three, but yeah, not one. that's not okay. my favorite. Um, I enjoyed the GameCube quite a bit, and now that I'm playing Ocarina Time yeah. on the GameCube, going back to it, it's still very comfortable. Mm-hmm. It C-sticks are tight. Buttons are great. I enjoyed it. Um, I'd say the PS4 controller. Okay. Being that I enjoyed the PlayStation 2 P- and 3, yeah. um, I think they really fixed a lot of the issues. I think PS4 is way better than their mm-hmm. older controllers. No question about it, but I still think... I'm not a fan of the, the lower thumbsticks. I, That's I, not for me. I enjoy it because I play a lot of FIFA, and it's just comfortable to have it there for me. Okay. That being said, um, my favorite controller is the Xbox 360. That's... A lot of people will call it the GOAT. Yeah, it's the GOAT. My only complaint about the Xbox 360 controller is the D-pad. That is literally... No, it's, it's, it's trojan on the first, but there was the second iteration that kind of fixed it, but it it's was, still... It was still bad. I don't like how it had that extra circle part around the D-pad. Yeah, I think it was something to do with Nintendo owning the patent for mm-hmm. the cross. That's why Sony never had a full, full okay, cross. It looked like arrows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Really? That would be interesting to know. Yeah, no, the Nintendo's uh, patent expired. That's why in the Xbox One, it's a full cross now. And it's, no, a, but it why? is also kind of modified. It's kind of like almost indented a little. I don't know if that, if there is still some sort of patent with That's Nintendo. That's pretty cool. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Nintendo owned since the NES. I learn things every day. There you mm-hmm. go. Honorable mention, I will say the Super Nintendo controller. That's, mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's, that's the retro controller of choice. Yeah. And then I'd throw the, I, I'm not even gonna say PS2 controller, like if, as an honorable mention, because it's the no, same. No. It's the same thing as the PS4. No, uh, Luca, what about you? I'm gonna start with my my favorites, because I think my my worst is gonna maybe lead to. I want to hear your opinion on it. And it's probably <laughs> sure. very uh, vocal about it. My top three. I'm gonna go with Dreamcast. Is is my like third. Mm-hmm. I love those triggers. Those triggers were they the first great, yeah. the first real triggers on a controller. The mm-hmm. fact that the Switch doesn't have it now, that, that bothers me. And those triggers still to this day, maybe the only one is, with the exception of 360, might be the best triggers. I, I know the new Xbox One controller is pretty nice with the, those triggers there. They got rumble feedback in the trigger, but those they, they had the right springiness in them. And and it, it just it was a simple controller. Like that that back then it wasn't you didn't need the second thumbstick right the games were simpler so you had your left thumbstick your thumb pad on the left and you had four buttons mm-hmm. and two triggers games were simpler games like crazy taxi such a good game yeah and it 
I, I liked it. The only my only beef was the cable underneath. Right. That was annoying as hell. But I mean, other than that, I had a lot of good time with that. Number two, and this is why I'm kind of whenever I talk about PlayStation, I kind of trash them because my my way is the whole Xbox styling, right? So yeah. the Xbox 360 is the second best one to me. Okay. Because it, it's a great controller. Now that I've played a little bit more and with with newer consoles and playing with a bunch of different controllers, I like a little bit narrower thumbsticks. And that's literally all. It, it basically comes down to the, the way the thumbsticks are, like so the way they feel. You like the 360 better than the Xbox One? No. Xbox um, One, that white controller I have is yeah. beautiful. I, I, wanted, I haven't tried the Elite, so that might be number one if I actually get my hands on it. But number okay. one is the Xbox One Lunar White with the rubber grip on the back and those thumbsticks, the, the neural on it, all the texture, you're never going to slip your thumbs off of it. Is that the only one with the rubber on the back? The right grip? now, but the new ones have like... Because they have all those other colors, right? All, that, the, those all those colored it? ones have like that kind of perforated texture on it, but it's plastic. It's not rubber. Oh, okay. Mm. My biggest beef with the Xbox One controller when it first dropped was the shoulder buttons. Okay, so yes. The, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the Lunar White mm-hmm. Xbox One controller with the thumbsticks. And this is the one thing, I, we're talking about this, why I think the Xbox controller is the best. It's the the buttons. They're, the the problem with the PlayStation controller, not even the DualShock 4, or is this 4? Yeah, this the problem is, is the, like the buttons are, they're just, they're straight. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. they're not rounded on the edges. So it's kind of like if you want to slide over to another button, I know it's very minimal and I'm picking like little things, but you have to lift up a little bit to get to it. Otherwise you're hitting that sharp, I guess not sharp edge, but an edge. Hey, wait, if you're going to play the new Marvel versus Capcom, you're getting blisters for sure on PlayStation. Yeah. Hashtag first world problem. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for, for my worst control, you know, I'm going to give an honorable mention though. I do love the Nintendo 64 controller. Ooh. Yeah. It wasn't bad. The first analog it stick. It was weird, but it worked. The trigger, you know, it's the first time I played a shooting game with a trigger. I almost targeting. I remember like, you know, trying to explain to someone, it's like, it's like you're shooting a gun with like your trigger <laughs> finger, you know, thinking it's all badass. But. Hey man, the Nintendo's, I've always said they're one of the first for everything in the, the gaming industry. Rumble pack. Yep. What, the, the, the multi-tap, the four four people playing on a co- single console. Not just that, the wireless controller. Wavebird for a Wave GameCube, Bird. yeah. They've always been the first. They, uh, Yeah, most of the time, most of the time. The mm-hmm. dual thumbsticks, was it out before the GameCube? No, Actually, what was, so. what was GameCube's competition? PlayStation 2 and Xbox. <laughs> Excuse me. So I mean, pl- Xbox and no and PlayStation One. I think was first to do dual thumbsticks. They don't didn't have the dual because I thought they halfway never, through the first. I think that's PS Two. PS One. No? They had. Oh, did they the do that? Yeah, they did. They did oh, that before was that PS1, the PS One. That's, that's right. Out. That's right. I'm gonna go with my worst controller. Yeah, the it, Nintendo it, Wii. Oh yeah. I hate that controller. It huh. ruined the Zelda. That, which one was it? I didn't it? even think of that as a I goddamn know, right? controller. The problem is, <laughs> exactly, don't yeah, yeah. so you have <laughs> 80, He's right, though. It didn't 80, exist. 80 different accessories to attach to it. Your batteries would like I had the charge, like I had a charging kit, and they would just go randomly. And then you have to figure out how you're gonna you have to find double A's. It was annoying as hell. Good you call. can't plug yeah. it in to your console, dude. Great call with that because it is yeah. a controller. Yeah. I, I didn't even think of it as but, a controller, but yeah. What Zelda was it? Do you, that think, that is, do you think that is a console? No, Twilight. It was Twilight. Yeah. Was, the, a was the first one. one. The, the one that came out on GameCube and Twilight. Twilight. So you're fighting the Skulltula, right? Yeah. And it, you have to wait for it to turn its back, and then you have to to jab it, not swing at it. You have to jab it. But this controller doesn't know the difference. It's supposed to. So every time, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna kill him, and I'm low on health, right? You know, you hear the 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 chiming that you have. Yeah, that you have low hearts. Yeah. And then I go jab. It's a simple motion. Yeah. And my guy swings, and then I'm dead. And I have to redo this part again. And then it's like you've killed like three of them. And yeah. So that's why the game, the the Nintendo Wii. Good call. I I can't stand it. That sucked. I don't know what else I can throw in there because there's nothing close to me. Like yeah. I respect the first Nintendo controller. I can't even dislike it because it's the original. Mm-hmm. It made you play a game, play, hold a controller in your hands as opposed to on a table with a, a stick and one but button. But who didn't buy the arcade, that uh, arcade joystick for Nintendo? That was amazing. I never bought, but I'm trying to tell you, Atari, which is I the had only... those like, really oversized A and B buttons that you can like smash with your fists and then have yeah, the yeah. turbo button. That was so good. That was good. cool, but it was the first <clears> one to... <throat> 
At least maybe there Put was. Put it in your uh, hand. Outside never, of having the joystick, it, it, it was an actual like. At least the, the first one we know I, nowadays. Only the first one I remember, right? right? So I give it its respect. I won't. I don't want to trash. Absolutely. Talk. So absolutely. The Wii though, that's that's to me the worst, and possibly the Move controllers. Yeah, the Move controllers for sure. Yeah. I never used them once. I bought I bought it and I, I played it for about because I had a great deal. I think the the place I bought it from. Matt's loving these gummies. Yeah, man. It's I'm gummies. At the end of the day, it's a gummy. Um, I remember I got a deal like the, the PlayStation Move with like the gun, whatever. Was, yes. Uh, it's normally 150, so they're supposed to take off 30 to make it 120, but they screwed up and had it as 130. Or sorry, save 120, and I'll oh, save yeah. for 30. That was amazing. So I bought I bought one and I uh, I played it for about 10 minutes. I'm like that what came is with garbage? resistance too. Yeah, yeah. And I, it was terrible with it. And then I packaged <laughs> so it up. Bad. I think I kept Resistance too because it was a good game. I packaged it up and I sold it for like 80 bucks or something like that, like a good yeah. price. I made money. You got some it. profit without the game. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Well, my list has pretty much been, oddly enough, the same as Matt's. So um, your best I'll, with, I'll change it up a bit. So You're not going to say Xbox 360 is your favorite controller. No, There's so, no so uh, worst by far for me was the Xbox original. Just because it was it was massive. That would be and, an honorable mention on my bottom and, list. That's and, yeah. Like I mentioned, at that time in my life, at uh, that age and size, it was way too big, and I, it didn't fit well in my hands. I had a hard time playing it. Uh, it was. We dumb. can edit that audio right there to make <laughs> yeah. it sound like he's talking about something else. <laughs> it didn't fit well in my hands. It was too big at that age. <clears throat> um, but uh, so by far, that for me is the worst controller. Although. The Wii is like right there. I, I, again, does anyone consider that a system? I think we've all forgotten and buried no, that one. It's it's a system. I just so it's I don't uh, think of the Wii Mote as a controller, but you're right. It's 100 percent a controller. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was bad. Um, for top three, I would say the PS4 DualShock is probably. I'm kind of jumping around here. Uh, it would be my number two. Number two. Um, I thought that'd be your one. Yeah, no, it'd be uh, my number two. It's not, it's not perfect, but it it works really well. It, it's and again, it's the it's, best PlayStation controller. It fits in my opinion. well in my hands. It's a nice size. The button mapping is like it's it's buttons are where they should be. Um, so I, I do like it. Um, oddly enough, on the list is uh, I, I got to give credit to the Xbox Lunar White controller that you have. It it's, is solid. it is really nice. Yeah. Um, the feel of it, the material it's made out yeah. of, like with the PlayStation DualShock, as silly as it sounds, like all these controllers are made of plastic, mm-hmm. but everything feels really plasticky. Yeah. Um, with that lunar white one with the rubber grip on it, how the buttons are, like you said, mm-hmm. are manufactured. Sure, it's just rubber, but it feels really good. It feels mm-hmm. premium. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's nice. Uh, so that would be my number three. Oddly enough, it was a, it was a toss for me between the PlayStation Four and the GameCube controller, but I think GameCube. Hmm. Um, and you know what? We just right before this, I picked yours up because you yeah, had it yeah, here, yeah. and I just it just fits so well, and it it's such a nice feeling controller. I, I, I don't know if they were analog at all, but the the, the I like the springy triggers. Mm. Like that's I'm a big fan of like that that feedback on on the trigger, right? Like that's why my one gripe with the as much as I love the Nintendo Switch is. They're just digital buttons on there. They're oh not. God! How can I? That, that'll be honorable mention number three for worst uh, controller for me. That that switch the this not the pro because I haven't seen it. Yeah. But the, those switch controllers, they're way too small. Y- you know and what? I'm not talking necessarily in the dock. Just if you take it, even in the dock, actually, in, in the, that it comes with the the handle. Um, it it they're too small. The buttons are too close to each other. You know what? They're you get really used to tiny. it though. I think if you're you know, if if you do end up apologizing for trash talking it, and I lend you my <laughs> my switch, you're gonna notice it's not as bad as you thought. Yeah, it's was, not great. I was gonna say I don't mind the switch controller. Uh, my my problem is though, it's it's those thumbsticks don't have a lot of. It's it's hard to aim just with that. Luckily in Zelda, you can use motion controls, which work fantastically. Right. Uh, if it was just a straight up shooter, I'd have a <clears> lot of problems with it. Like if there was no motion control with it, I'd miss. I'd hit like twenty percent of my shots if that. Like hmm. with a bow and arrow. So yeah, GameCube for me takes the top of the list. Wow, that's that's a, it's a good controller. Yeah. It's it's definitely in, in the upper tier of mine for sure. Yeah. I think it's just a very underrated controller. I feel like that whole system, the GameCube as in as a whole, was very underrated, personally. Yeah. It kind of was. But the thing is, PS2 was really good at that time. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, too. Was, yeah, that might have been. It's the top selling system of all time. That might be one of the best, if not the best, generations of console, like for its time, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from the PS2. I just think the GameCube. When people talk about that gen- generation, they go simply PlayStation, Xbox, and they don't mention the GameCube. But mm-hmm. Resident Evil Four first came out for GameCube. Yeah, that's and right. Was a time exclusive, game. and that was unbelievable. Double Dash. Double Dash was Love another that underrated. That's, I was Mario talking to Kart. someone else, and it might be my. They favorite. agreed with me. That was my favorite one. I was talking with Martin actually, mm-hmm. uh, not Marty Mart, the other Martin, mm-hmm. uh, and we we're talking. I think it was him, and we we're saying, "What is the?" We're talking about Double Dash. I'm like talking to you guys, and you guys are really big fans of it, mm-hmm. and then. I'm like, that might have been one of the worst ones to me. Really? Yeah, and they, he agreed too. So, I mean, I guess it's hit or miss with that game. Uh, that it was. Is. A lot of people didn't like it's, it. I didn't like the two-man crew. See, and, I liked that because it was fun being able switching to characters. Two Yeah. Yeah. And you could co-op with a buddy, which was cool. And, and the just, carts were cool. They had two people. The carts kind of moved. How's the battle? I don't even remember the battle mode too much. Classic was it, battle mode. Was yeah. it classic? Yeah. Was it, okay, that's it's fantastic. Okay. And the maps on that game were great. And the, the circuits or the tracks were mm-hmm. great. Yeah, I honestly, whenever I think of that game, I just think of that one desert one where it's like that, like funnel into. Yes. Mm-hmm. I remember going around like, it, it was a good game, but it like sixty four before it was. I had so much more fun with. They also had. Um, How you can know, you forget Twin Snakes? So you say Twin Snakes. Twin Snakes, yeah. Um, if you were Solid. still a fan of wrestling games, no they pun. had Day of Reckoning, which was an awesome. It was I like an evolved, souped up version of. No Mercy. Yeah. There, like, there was a... Luigi's Mansion was un- amazing. Mm-hmm. Don't Mario's, get me started on Mario Sunshine. I'm gonna, Sunshine was awesome. Yeah, we it was a nah. good game. That's probably the next one since Mario 64, God. the second best. I like it more than Galaxy. Wind Galaxy's. Waker. Like, they had a lot of no, good games. No, no, no. Here's games. one. Here's one, Ashton. You can't deny. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Oh, that game Those was Those games were awesome. That game was, was fantastic. There was one game on GameCube that uh, I played, never played it again, and I just remembered finding what it was, but it was a Star Fox game, but it was an action adventure Star Fox yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would like third person yeah, Star Fox. And you had a staff and stuff. That game what was, was that wicked. Called? Yeah, yeah. That was great. That was I didn't sorry, that was great. I saw a little bit of it and it looked really cool. I just I got onto the PlayStation yeah, bandwagon no, I, at that point. I was a big GameCube fan. Like looking back now, I think I was uh I, I really, yeah, really I enjoyed love that, that system. system. The yeah. problem it had its games, but PlayStation 2 is hitting so, like, I'm, it was the less powerful system. It had the one year on everyone, but it had everything. It -hmm. it was great. Uh, The PlayStation 2 is my top two for sure console generation. I will go back and say this about that console. When I look back at that generation and when I look back to games I want to play still and again, there are more GameCube games that I'm willing to go back and play and fish it, play it, than fish out my PS2 and play. If yeah. I still had my PS3 plays everything backwards compatible. I'm trying to think. Shadow of the Colossus was that PS2? Mm-hmm. That was a great one. PS2 had, yeah, I don't know. I, I like them both. They're, they're great consoles. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Looks like we all enjoy the GameCube uh, controller. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm say that takes the takes the cake for all of us. It's a, yeah, it's a good controller. All right. Um, definitely, I think for next week, or at least in the coming weeks, uh, we'll get to Matt's topic in regards to how the systems are currently holding up right now since launch, so three years into the Xbox One and PS4. Um, and uh, we'll uh, update uh, with the news, and until then, we're gone gaming.